Hi, in this video called Advanced Factoring Techniques, we're going to talk about a few special things that you might be able to do in order to help factor some polynomials that you might be dealing with. So, one thing that we might be able to do is some substitution, and I'm calling it U substitution because that's something that you're going to be doing in calculus. Uh, we're going to be using it here to factor, but we're going to consider replacing a term or perhaps even multiple terms, right, a polynomial within an expression with just a single variable. And that way it might make it easier to see if something is factorable. Once we factor it, then we're going to replace the variable with whatever was there originally. And then we might even consider some additional factoring. So I broke this down into some um, special cases where this, this happens to come up a lot. So the first one is a quadratic-like trinomial expression. So we're very good at this point in Algebra 2. Um, uh, we're very good with factoring quadratics, right? So even though this is not a quadratic, right, this is a sixth degree polynomial, it behaves a lot like a quadratic trinomial. And here's why. Notice that the degree of this one is 3, right? So I'm just going to say like that. That's n for right now. It turns out that the degree of this term is double that, right? It's 2n. When we have this relationship happening with the, the, the degrees of these first two terms, and the final thing that has to happen is that this is a constant, right? This is degree 0. Um, this is going to put the um, polynomial in the same situation as a quadratic, right? Because a quadratic here, this is normally a 2, and this is a 1, right? Where this is double the 1. So when that happens, we're able to do this u substitution. So what I'm going to do to start this one off is to rewrite the x to the 6th and the x cubed as a quadratic term and a linear term. Now that's kind of weird what I just said. But notice that I have to have a squared on this. So I'm using our exponent properties to go backwards, right? So to, to turn an x to the 6th into something squared, that something would have to, have to have been an x cubed. And here, right, this is an x cubed basically raised to the first power. This is an invisible one here. And now I'm going to use that to rewrite it as a quadratic. And I'm going to use this u to, to represent the x cubed. So I'm going to replace those x cubes with u's now. So now the expression we're dealing with is 2u squared plus 13u minus 7, right? And now that's going to feel a lot better to work with, and we should be familiar with how to factor that one, right? This is going to factor into 2u and u, right? And to get to negative 7, we would need a 7 and a negative 1, and we just need to figure out the placement of those things. And it turns out we can do that. So we have these two factors. But this isn't our final answer, right? Because the problem didn't start with u's to begin with. We're going to take the u and unreplace it, right, with the x cubed again. So I'll put the x cubed back in. And now we have our, our final factored form here. All right, there's one other thing that we could do. And I say that we could replace an entire polynomial, right, multiple terms with a, with a variable. And here we seem to have a nice situation to do that. We have 8x plus 9 as part of this first term, and it's also part of this second term. So why don't we do that? Let's let u equal 8x plus 9, and I'll replace this polynomial now. So this is now a u squared minus 3, this got replaced, u cubed. And now it should be easier to see that we have a GCF that we can factor out, right? We could factor out a u squared. So u squared is now in the front. That would leave behind a 1 from the first term, minus 3, and an additional u on that second term. Okay, so now that we've seen that GCF, and you very well um, may have seen that we could just factor out the 8x plus 9 to begin with. You don't actually have to do this u substitution. That's totally fine. And eventually you do build up to that. This is just a nice helpful way of, of seeing it if you're not used to it at the beginning. But eventually you put this back in. Okay, so I've replaced my u's 
with the 8x plus 9s, right, on both of those places. And now I have to clean this up and see what happens there. So here, if I distribute that negative 3, it turns out we have some like terms we could combine here. So look, the 1 minus 27, that gets us this negative 26 here. And negative 24 and 26, they're both even. So it looks like I have another GCF that I could factor out of this term. And because this is a negative, I'm going to factor out a negative 2. It just is going to look nicer. We like to have positive coefficients. So I'm going to put that negative 2 in front. Right here, we still have the 8x uh, plus 9 squared. And then when I factored out this negative 2, both of these terms changed to positives. And then I think that's it. That's all we can do there. So that would be our final factored form of that expression. OK, there's one other strategy I want to talk about in this video. And that's when you might want to split a term into multiple terms. So here I'm just going to focus on splitting one term into two terms, but really you could do this as many, um, as many terms as you want. So why would you want to do that and when would you want to do that? We want to do that when something isn't factorable in the form that it's in. And we when, when we do that, we tend to do it in times where it's really close to being something that's factorable. Right? I put close in, in quotes here, meaning like it looks like it could be a perfect square trinomial, but that one middle term is off by something, or it's really close to being um, the sum of cubes, but it's off by something. So you want to kind of force it to be what you want it to be. So we're going to split the term that's messing things up into, in this case today, we're going to do two terms, right? But I said you could do as many as you want in order to create the polynomial that you know is factorable, but it's also going to create an additional term. And we want that additional term to also be something we can work with. So maybe you want that additional term to be a square or a cube. So you, that, that's how you're going to decide how to break it down. So this, does, this sounds weird until we really see one. So let's jump into that. OK, so my reminder to you on this one is that sometimes we actually have the difference of squares in front of us. But it actually looks nothing like that, but it's going to turn into a difference of squares problem. To, it is quite surprising. So how would I know to do this? Well, take a look what we have here. We have one of these quadratic-like expressions right, that we started off with in the beginning. So to be quadratic-like, right, we know that this exponent is double this, and this is just a constant. We want this to be factorable. But 16 is a square, and if this is going to factor into a square, right? Remember for our, our lesson about completing the square? We'd want this here to be an 8, right? This would have to be the number that gets cut in half and then squared to get to here. So I wish that this was an 8, because then I could have my factors of x squared, x squared, 4, and 4, and then everything would work out. So what if we did this? What if we changed this 4x squared into an 8x squared? No, I know I can't just do that, right? That's a different amount. I'm going to do something to balance that. And that's this idea of splitting a term. So if I take 4x squared and I replace it with an 8x squared, I'm going to have to have a minus 4x squared somewhere else here, right? Think about that. These two blue things, don't they combine to get this 4x squared? So now we've created this balance, right? This is still equal to the one above. So let's see what else that accomplished. Not only did this 8x squared allow us to create a perfect square trinomial right here, the term that we're subtracting also happens to be a square. So this right here, right? This first, um, the trinomial portion, that factors now It's something squared minus something squared. And that's where the difference of squares comes from, right? You would not have seen that unless we have done, done this split here. So now that it's the difference of squares, we have to remember, we know how to factor that, right? We're going to find what's being squared in each of those. The two factors are conjugates of, of one another. So 
let's just rewrite this 4x squared as really the quantity of 2x being squared, right? So now we have our a is this x squared plus 4, and our b is this 2x. And that's perfect. Now we can write down a minus b, a plus b. We could even use some u substitution to do this. I kind of skipped it on that step because I feel like we, if we just write down what a and b are, we can plug into this formula. But that's basically what we're doing. And now we got to clean that up. So let's see, this turned into a quadratic, right? This is another quadratic. You do want to consider if this is factorable. And it looks like, let's see here, two, ooh, this is close. Yeah, you might think that we could use this trick that we did up, uh, the splitting up here, right, to do something with this now to keep factoring. I think the issue though is that if I did this trick, this would have to be a 4x. And to balance that, I'd have a minus 2x, and that's not a square, right? So that's not going to be something that we can work with there. But it's worth thinking about, right? But in the end here, I think we're done. So this was able to, to be factored into these two quadratic trinomials. So these techniques, right, they're, they're not always obvious. Um, we don't always think about them, but they are there as possible um, techniques for us to factor. So give them a try if you ever get stuck factoring something.